Good morning or good afternoon. I'm filming a video today that I can't even believe is real. I'm doing a pack with me and I'm gonna be explaining my travel plans today because I have been so cryptic about them and I hate when people are like, big things coming, you'll find out soon, that kind of thing. And I've totally been that person, but I am leaving tomorrow and I'm leaving for four months. Yeah. That's gonna be my closet for the next four months which is crazy there's just so much stuff that i need and i did hauls on my tiktok i will link my tiktok in the description but make sure you go follow if you want to see everything that i got for my travel hauls because i really needed a lot of things also in between coffee i'm trying to drink water this is how much i've done today which is actually pretty good but trying to stay on that one gallon a day i don't know how i'm gonna do that when i'm traveling because i'm not bringing this it's way too big i set out some dresses and rompers right here Shirts right here, pants right here, one pair of pajamas, hats, bikinis, and then I have my coffee and I'm watching YouTube videos. My sister and brother just brought me this. It's a passion tea lemonade from Starbucks. Very grateful for that. So essentially, I was supposed to study abroad in Spain this semester coming up, like spring semester. It was a hard thing because you just never knew what was gonna happen with COVID, like what rules were gonna change, what regulations were gonna look like. And so around September, I started to kind of talk to my advisors, talk to my parents about what I was gonna do because at that point, COVID is still very rampant and we weren't sure what refund policies would look like from study abroad programs, if I were to get sent home early or if I just wasn't able to go at all due to COVID. Anyways, we had been in contact with the program that I was supposed to go on and their advisors and then my own advisors. I was talking to my parents because it was sounding like the refund policies weren't all that great. If I were to A, not be able to go on my program at all due to COVID or B, if I were to get sent home early due to COVID. And so it just was very unsure how much we would be refunded from them, if I would be refunded at all. It was just really unclear. and. It makes sense because such an unknown time and nobody's ever encountered this before so they didn't know what to expect or how to completely handle it we didn't all that kind of stuff so then one of my best friends chloe reached out she started developing a new plan for herself and it was to take online classes through our college and travel on her own and end of september beginning of october she came to me with this idea and I loved it like it was just the coolest we would have to enroll as online students and then basically that's it like the school wouldn't be determining what we were doing other than being online students and for us being an online student means that the classes are asynchronous so you don't have to meet for zoom which would work if we were going to anywhere that was in a different time zone so we basically just started talking to everyone we talked to our advisors like our parents and everything really fell into place and so we started developing a very rough itinerary of like if we were to go where we'd want to go all that kind of stuff like including the cost of tuition the cost of airfare the cost of airbnbs and we found that it was actually very comparable it was roughly the same price as it would cost to study abroad which is actually really crazy then if anything happened like covid went crazy or restrictions changed or we got like anything happened then we could just go home and we automatically have refunds available we don't have to like go through university or anything like that like we could just get on a plane and get home our first destination is thailand and we are going to thailand on tuesday so today is sunday and we fly out tuesday morning and we won't actually arrive in thailand until wednesday night and then we have a long layover in the bangkok airport and then we're flying to phuket because right now Thailand has a alternative quarantine for travelers who are fully vaccinated from certain countries and we meet those requirements and so we were able to apply for a Thailand pass and my test results came back negative and then we have to show those results when we leave Seattle and fly to Bangkok and after that we have no plans we were originally supposed to go from Thailand to Singapore. It just was looking really unsure of whether we were going to be able to get into Singapore. That is the plan. It is very much still in the works. It's really up in the air, which is really insane. And like I said, we have nothing booked. So we're just going to have to book our next destination while we're in Thailand. Yeah, 
it's really crazy i can't believe it's actually happening but bringing tons of like wipes hand sanitizer masks all that good stuff so we are trying to be as cautious as possible but we do feel like we are very well prepared so really excited and that was like the longest explanation ever but that is basically my travel plans and like i said everything is subject to change which is fun and terrifying at the same time so that is basically it but that's why you have to make sure you're watching the vlogs so that you will see as our plans change making sure that i'm documenting this crazy part of our lives it's 3 30 right now i could be done packing i'm just seriously procrastinating so hard and it's nobody's fault except for my own this is a mess over here but i'm gonna light a little candle for ambiance this is my mom's candle company rooted in collective definitely go check them out this is the fig and spiced honey scent she makes clean candles so they're made of a coconut soy and beeswax blend with no paraffins the scents are all natural they're made from essential oils and it has a wooden wick she has a website that you can buy them at so i'll link it down below for you guys but i love these candles so much because of the wooden wick it just crackles and it's the best thing ever oh my god connor told me though the flame burns slower if you hold it straight up oh okay well that didn't work okay let's try this again Okay, that's what I always do every single time, guys. Like, every single time. I forget to move the candle away once I light it, and then I go to blow the match out, and I blow the candle out, too. I'm not kidding you when I say I've done that every single time this week. Did I? It only took four tries. Good morning, everybody. I'm filming this the next day. I'm filming the rest of this video today because... I had a slight mental breakdown last night about packing and my trip, so I had to take a break and we're gonna finish up today. I think it's just really hitting me how far away from home I'm gonna be and how sad I am to leave my family. I'm such a homebody and so this is a huge change for me. So I think it's natural to feel this way, but we're gonna finish up today and finish strong. So far I've said bye to my dad and my brother because they both had things going on this morning and i said bye to connor my boyfriend like almost a week and a half ago so <laughs> the goodbyes are getting really tough but i'm just trying to stay positive and excited because i know this is all good change and it's really important for me to push myself out of my comfort zone because i'm such a homebody and it's really comfortable for me to be home and i love my family but I think in order for me to really get out of my comfort zone and push myself, this is what I need to do. So it's really hard. It's really hard. Bet you didn't expect to see me here. <laughs> I literally have so much to tell you guys. So much has happened in the last three days and I'm here to fill you in. I know you're probably expecting me to be somewhere exotic, a new location, somewhere really cool, but as you probably could tell, I am back in my room at home. And it is Friday, January 21st, and I'm back home, and it is a long story. And I'm gonna try and explain it as thoroughly and quickly as possible because there are so many details and so many things I can't leave out that are so important to the story but I also know it's a really long story so I, I gotta keep it short for your guys sake so basically I my mom and I drove to Seattle on Monday January 17th to go there to do some last minute shopping and so that we could spend the night so it would be close to the airport so on Monday I had a huge mental breakdown and I was just having a really hard time saying goodbye to my family and thinking about the fact that I was about to leave for such a long time and I was procrastinating so hard I didn't pack 
any of my stuff like my stuff was packed like halfway but i was just gonna i just decided i was just gonna finish packing when i got to seattle and just like take everything with me and then when i got there decide like what i wanted to keep what i was gonna like give to my mom to take back home i just was not doing well like honestly i was such a train wreck like it was just really hard to wrap my head around the fact that i was just gonna be leaving so far from home and i wouldn't see my family for such a long time and saying so many goodbyes is so hard for me and like i've said like i'm such a homebody and it was really hard for me so i had this weird feeling too that i've never had about a trip and i don't know still if it was like my intuition telling me what was about to happen or if it was genuinely just the fact that i'm 20 and i've never been so far from home or away from my family for so long we packed up my stuff and what like the crazy amount that i had and drove over to seattle and like i said did some last minute shopping i got a new travel backpack which i'll show you guys whenever i have time and it's amazing i love it so much and my mom and i went out to dinner i was just so sad the whole time like thinking about leaving and so we got to the hotel at like 10 p.m and <laughs> we just started repacking everything finally around midnight we finally got everything packed everything fit it was a miracle and so we went to bed and i went to bed at like 12 30 in the morning and then woke up at 6 30 a.m on tuesday and i did a little workout in the hotel room to tire my legs out because i have restless legs then we got ready and by that time i was starting to feel more excited like on monday i was telling my dad i was like sobbing and i was like i don't know why i just don't feel excited like i've never felt this way about a trip before it's so weird and i'm normally like having like excited butterflies like i normally can't wait i have just like been having a really hard time thinking about leaving and so that could have been part of it but i was telling my dad i didn't feel excited and then finally when i woke up on tuesday morning to leave for my flight i finally felt excited so i was really really nervous i remember checking my heart rate in the elevator on my watch and it said my resting heart rate was like 132 which is so horrible but i was like so nervous and thinking about saying bye to my mom so hard and so but i was starting to get excited like i said I got to the airport at like 8 8 30 and Corey and chloe had already checked in with their families and so we got in line to check in everything went smoothly they checked my all the things i needed and they gave me my boarding pass and then we went and headed towards security and said bye to our families it was so freaking hard i cried as always and then we were off and so we headed to our gate since we were traveling on an international flight we had to verify our passports and then verify all the information that we had to have with us in order to get into thailand in order to get into thailand right now you need to have your insurance information you need to have your passport obviously your vaccination card and something called a thai pass and so the thai pass is basically your entry ticket into thailand and you have to go online and upload a ton of information onto it so you have to upload your passport information you have to upload vaccine records you have to upload your insurance information you have to upload your hotel reservation and you have to stay in a certain government approved hotel you have to upload your registration for covid testing when you arrive and then day six of your stay and then you had to upload like just literally everything that you were going to be doing there you had to tell them and you had to upload it in order to get into thailand and you had to give them your flight number into thailand so then this is important with the thai pass there were different like levels based on your vaccination status so whether you were fully vaccinated or unvaccinated that's kind of how it was broken up into so the only programs that were allowed for new travelers were the sandbox program and an alternative quarantine program so we applied for the sandbox program because we are all fully vaccinated and so we didn't need to do a full 10-day quarantine in thailand because we're fully vaccinated so we applied under the sandbox program which essentially meant at the time that you could go to the island of phuket in thailand and they would let you stay on the island for seven days if you had a negative covid test on arrival and if you were staying seven days in a government approved hotel with insurance information like all of the things i said earlier and so you had to apply for the sandbox give them all that information and given that you had a negative covid test upon arrival and before you got to thailand then if you tested negative again on the sixth day you were free to travel anywhere in the country and that was that so we applied 
to the sandbox program and the other important thing to note is that when you're flying to Phuket there's no direct flights to Phuket from anywhere so you have to fly into Bangkok and then get another flight from Bangkok to Phuket so we booked our tickets from Seattle to Bangkok and we had one layover in Korea and then we booked another ticket from Bangkok to Phuket because like I said you can't book a direct flight to Phuket. We had gotten our applications approved for the sandbox program for our Thai pass same thing and we were all ready to go and it was a really crazy process because Chloe's got approved after like a week of applying, Corey's got approved after 15 days of applying and mine got denied the first two times and then the third time it got approved in like two hours. It was a process to even get those passes and such a nightmare to even get them because I didn't get mine until like four days before we left. Back to Tuesday. We got to our gate and we went to go verify our information and they told us we needed to present our Thai pass, we needed to present our passports, our vaccination records, and then they told us that we needed to show them our insurance. And so we all had our insurance cards with us. And so we just showed them our insurance cards and they said, no, you need to have a physical printed out copy of your insurance that states that you have a $50,000 minimum medical coverage overseas and coverage for any COVID related expenses. And we were like, okay, nobody told us that. Like we already entered all of that information when we applied for the tie pass and got approved. And then we were never told that we had to have a physical copy. Like, where are we gonna find a printer? You know, like all of these things are going through our head. And our flight was leaving at 11.35. That was the departure time. We got to our gate at like 9.45. So we had like a little less than two hours to get all of this figured out. So I called my mom and I was like, oh my gosh, mom, like, I don't know what to do. They just told me I need to have all this information. So my mom was amazing. She was already driving home, but she pulled over. She got on the phone with her insurance company and she was on the phone with them for a while. And then the insurance company called me and then they were talking to me for a while and asking what information I needed. And luckily with my insurance plan, they were able to write me a travel letter and then rush it to my email. And so it honestly took about an hour and they were able to get me the information I needed. And then it was just such a process because Corey was having a hard time getting any information from her insurance company and Chloe as well. And so the three of us were like scrambling, trying to figure out how to get this information so we could get on our flight. There were a lot of people in the same boat as us. While that was stressful, it kind of made us feel better because then it made us feel like we weren't dumb and had totally missed something. So we finally all got all of our information. We weren't even sure if this was like what they were wanting. Like we all had separate types of information and we were like, this is the best we can do. It was 11.15. We showed them and they were like, okay, get on the plane. Like, here's your ticket, go. We got on the plane at like 11.20 and then we had 15 minutes before the flight left, which was so crazy. And we got to our seats and got onto the plane heading for South Korea, which was our first leg. So it was stressful to begin with. And then we had a 10 and a half hour flight and we were looking at each other like that had to have been the worst of it. There's no way it can get worse from here. Like that was so crazy. I can't believe that happened. And then we got off the plane after 10 and a half hours, landed in South Korea at about 4 p.m. South Korea time. So then we were in South Korea and we had to walk to a transfer desk because they didn't give us our tickets to get from Seoul, South Korea to Bangkok, Thailand. We had to go to the transfer desk and re-verify all of our information and then they would give us our pass to go to Bangkok. So went to go re-verify all of our information. We were feeling good. Next flight was leaving at 6.55 South Korea time. So we had just under three hours. This is when everything went wrong for us. So we went to the transfer desk and they were looking at all of our information and looking at it for a while and we were starting to get a little nervous because it was taking them a while and all of the travel agents were talking amongst themselves in Korean. We had no idea what they were saying, but they weren't talking to us. They were just looking at all of our information and talking to each other. Then one of them looks at us and goes, something's wrong here you guys are gonna need to go sit down so we're kind of panicking and we go sit down then after a little while they come over to us and inform us that we don't have the correct flight that we needed we still don't know what exactly went wrong but apparently they were only letting certain flights go to phuket for the sandbox program but we were never made aware of that because we applied for the thai pass we put our flight number for bangkok to phuket and they approved it so we thought we were good so we had that flight scheduled, but Korean Airlines, which was the airline we were flying on, told us that they couldn't authorize our Thai passes because they weren't able to accept the flight that we were going to be going from Bangkok to Phuket on because it somehow wasn't partnered with them. So they had no idea of knowing 
whether or not our flight was approved or verified or something. We still don't really know. There was a language barrier also. Then they started telling us that we were going to have to stay in Bangkok for seven nights and do our quarantine there. So they were telling us we needed to get a new hotel, get new Thai passes, and stay in Bangkok for seven nights. We started panicking because we, one, already had all of our stuff booked for Phuket and we were really confused why all of a sudden we're in Korea and they're telling us right then and there that it's wrong. And then they're telling us you have to make a decision right now. You have to decide if you're going to Bangkok or if you're going back to Seattle. And we were starting to look into other options. We were looking at how much it would cost to find a different flight to Bangkok because at this point it's already 5 30 p.m. Our flight's leaving in an hour and a half and we haven't even made it through Korean customs yet. I called my mom and it's like 2 a.m. in Seattle. I was like mom I'm so sorry but I think I'm gonna have to come home like I don't know what's going on. We might be going to Bangkok now. I have no idea and so my mom was like okay like just keep me in the loop. Do whatever you have to do like just be safe and keep me updated and so I was on the phone with my mom off and on throughout this whole thing and Corey was on the phone with her mom too and they were I feel so bad they were so stressed out as you can imagine anyways we are trying to figure out what it would look like to get a new hotel in Bangkok to do our quarantine there and then we realized there's no guarantee that our Thai passes if we were to get new ones would get approved on time we literally had waited 15 days seven days the other ones to get approved the first time so there was no guarantee our Bangkok ones if we were to reapply would get approved in an hour before we needed to get on the flight and then we would have had to also in that amount of time rebook our hotel for bangkok schedule covid tests and re-enter all of our information and then still get through customs and make it on our flight in an hour and a half and so we kind of came to terms with the fact that that just was not going to happen like we even if we wanted to go to Bangkok, there was no way that we could make it on that certain flight. So we asked them when the next flight was to go from Seoul to Bangkok, and they said it was this time tomorrow. So that meant the only other Delta flight or Korean air flight operating out of Seoul to Bangkok was in 24 hours. So we would be in the Korean airport for 24 hours. That did not sound ideal to us. So we started looking at other airlines to see Seoul to Bangkok flights and they would have been like crazy amounts of money just to get from Seoul to Bangkok, like $400, $600, and they would have all left the next afternoon. So we would have had to spend the night in the Korean airport. So we're kind of freaking out at this point because it looks like we're not gonna be able to get our Thai passes in time. There's no guarantee. We probably can't even get a new flight to Bangkok. We can't go to Phuket, they won't let us in. And then they come up to us and they tell us, we still don't know if this is true information or not, but this is what they told us. The Korean air people told us, in order to go to Bangkok, your COVID test had to have happened 48 hours before arrival in Bangkok for them to approve it. And I got my COVID test on Saturday in the States because what we were told and what allowed us to get onto the flight from Seattle to Seoul was that your COVID test to get into Thailand had to be 72 hours before departure. So I had gotten my test on Saturday and it came back as negative and it came back on Saturday night. So by that point, I think it had been about 60 hours since my test. Corey and Chloe had gotten theirs on Monday night. So even if we were to get another flight into Bangkok, their tests were already about 40 hours old. So it was getting to down to the wire and I asked them, I was like, is there any way we can get tested in the airport here? And they said no. And at that point, that's when I knew. And I looked at Corey and Chloe and I said, guys, I need to go home. There is literally no way that I can get from here to anywhere else in the world. And I, I just have to go home. I don't have a choice. My test is expired. It's gonna cost so much money for us to rebook everything, for everything to happen all over again. I just need to go home and so i asked the korean airline people if we had any other options and they said no they said your only option now is to go back to seattle you already missed your flight to bangkok and there's no way you can get a new thai pass on time and by the time you get to thailand if you were to get to thailand your covid test would be expired so there's really no way you can go anymore and so i called my mom and i told her i said mom i have to come home and she was really shocked my parents were so shocked but they said, okay, like just do what you have to do to get home. Like we just want you home safe. Like this is such a nightmare. I realized, I said, guys, our COVID tests were so long ago and to get back into America, they have to be 24 hour tests. And so we started talking to the Korean airline agents again and asking them what we would do because there was no way we could get another COVID test. Our tests were too old. 
and we had to get back to the states we really had no other option i was starting to have these nightmares of like being stuck in the korean airport like not able to get a covid test not able to leave not able to go home not able to go anywhere they called the cdc for us in the states on our behalf and they got exemptions for all of us to come home given our situation we were starting to look up flights to get home and by some miracle there was a flight leaving seoul going from seoul to san francisco to seattle and it was departing at 8 30 p.m korea time so at this point it's about 7 15 in korea we've by far missed our flight and we have like an hour to get new flights booked and to make this flight the korean airline agent gets our exemptions from the cdc and says book your flights right now and to give me your passports i'll print out your boarding passes as soon as you buy your flights so we're going on to Delta, we're buying our new flights. He, as soon as we press purchase, he takes our passports, scans them, prints out our new boarding passes and tells us the directions to our gate. He's like, you guys need to go right now. Like your plane is leaving, it's boarding soon. So we spend a insane amount of money on a plane ticket. We get on the flight, we literally had enough time to run to our gate. There was one coffee shop open in the whole Korean airport or at least the terminal we were in. And so we hadn't eaten anything since we got off the plane. We hadn't drank any water, like nothing. We were starving, we were dehydrated, we were tired. We had slept like 45 minutes each on the plane. So it's a horrible situation. So we go and we get these little coffees at the coffee shop. And then we went to our gate. It was right by our gate. And within 10 minutes, they were boarding the plane. And we flew 10 and a half hours back to San Francisco. And then we had a four and a half hour layover in San Francisco. And then we flew two hours back to Seattle. And then we had to drive about two hours home that is the situation we are safe we made it home and i can't even believe all of that happened like it's seriously not even real to me waking up in my bed the next day it made everything feel like a dream because i had been in my bed like two or three days earlier and it seemed like everything happened so fast we drove to seattle flew to korea flew back from korea to san francisco flew back to seattle and then i was home again and it was just crazy the entire thing happened within 36 hours which is just so crazy yeah if anyone's thinking of traveling to thailand right now unless you want to stay in bangkok for seven nights i would not recommend it was a horrible experience and cost us a lot of time and money. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. I know that people that I've told already have so many questions and we have very minimal answers and we want answers too, but I don't think we're gonna get them. My mom has since looked to see about the 48 hour rule for COVID tests getting into Bangkok and she can't find anything. So we don't know where that came from still, but regardless, we were gonna have to spend the night in the airport in Korea and then my test would have been so long ago that it would have been expired and it was gonna be a nightmare, so we just decided to cut our losses, come home, and regroup. We're back home and developing our next plan. You just can't anticipate anything. We just have to roll with the punches. We've literally just been at home and just sleeping and catching up on our meals, <laughs> on sleep, all of the above, and trying to wrap our heads around everything. For now, that's the update. I was wishing this would be a travel vlog of me landing in Thailand, but someday. Someday I will go to Thailand. This is my second time trying to go to Thailand and it not happening. So one of these days, third time's a charm, I will be able to go to Thailand, just not yet. Like I said earlier, it's really crazy that I feel like my intuition was kind of preparing me for what was about to happen. And my mom and I had had a conversation the night before when we were in Seattle, before I left. And we were talking about the butterfly effect and how just tiny little things will happen in your life that will impact other tiny things that will impact other things. And it just has a ripple effect on your whole life and like you can't anticipate any of it but looking back you can just see all the little things that let up and it all happens for a reason and i'm a firm believer that even though it doesn't seem like everything always happens for a reason you can always find a meaning and a purpose for why everything happened it's not always easy in the moment and it's really hard to see the positives or even just the lessons that come out of bad things happening i think after a little while you can just start to see the redirection and the purpose that it has in your life which sucks like nobody likes rejection nobody likes to hear that their plans aren't going to work out or what they thought was meant for them is not it sucks but you just kind of have to see the bigger picture and just know that it will work out for the better and it was interesting too because my mom and i were talking about this analogy that i had kind of talked about and how it's interesting because we all have like these paths that we're heading down and at the end of the path is like this goal that we have for ourselves and maybe there's multiple paths or whatever it looks like but we all have these paths and at some point the path will come to a door or maybe a set of doors 
and sometimes you think you know what's behind a certain door and you think you know which door is the right door and so you knock and you knock and you knock and you want that door to open so bad and then it just doesn't and there's nothing you can do about it some doors aren't going to open they're meant to stay locked and you're not meant to find out what's behind them and then you might look to your left and see there's a new path and you just have to go down that path and while it might take more time while it might be a longer journey you might come across another door and that door might be wide open and it might lead you down the path that you've never never could have expected but still working towards that same end goal just a different path than you envisioned and different doors opening i hope that analogy made sense i don't even know if it did but it made sense when we were talking about it and it was wild that we were talking about the butterfly effect and then that pathway analogy the night before all of this happened so while I'm sad and while it sucks that I'm not on the beach in Thailand right now, I am very hopeful for what's to come and I just am choosing to see this as a form of redirection and knowing that everything that's happening is because it's meant to happen for me and I am just being looked after and protected and everything will work out in its time. So I think there's a lot of peace in knowing that and I don't have to know all the answers right now. I probably won't know the answers for a long time. And that's okay. And I'm learning to be okay with that. Like I said, that's the update, but hopefully soon there will be a travel vlog that will not result in me coming back home. So fingers crossed. I'm very hopeful, but for now, just relaxing at home and learning from this. So <laughs> it's crazy, it's nuts, but that's what's been going on in my life. So I'll keep you guys updated as my life continues in this crazy direction. But for now, that's all I've got, so. Thanks guys so much for watching and hopefully the next video will be more exciting, more interesting, and I'll be in a new location, but we'll talk to you later. Bye.